Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, May 9th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The seismic swarm in Iceland continues, but the big story, people aren't prepared for snow in May. Shut up, Al! Get in your home! Wintry weather catches Sierra drivers off guard. Keep calm. It's boom time. Spring storm delivers much-needed snow to Northern California mountains. Hello! Spring has sprung in much of California, but winter is hanging on in parts of the Sierra Nevada, where snow fell Sunday and forecasters warn of hazardous travel conditions. Now, according to the... Na no, no thanks. Now, according to the National Weather Service, they issued a weather warning through 11 p.m., predicting up to 10 inches of snow in the mountains above 5,000 feet, and that is much needed moisture. Bogus Basin picked up 18 inches of snow ho, 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 in 12 hours in mid -May. Hey, hey, hey. Shut up, Al! Oh, man, he just can't handle this. The truth. Can you handle the truth? Southwest Montana wakes to snow, and temperatures are below normal. Holy mackerel. Does that look like a uh, pre-summer scene? I doubt it. Local bursts of heavier snow possible in California's Tahoe Basin. What is going on? Whew. Here's the latest, May 9th. UC Berkeley Central Snow Lab reported that its gauge at Soda Springs measured 4.1 inches of snow in the past 24 hours as of 8 a.m. They're expecting more snow over the next few days with this late season storm as we, could be, we couldn't be happier about it. Hello, holy macaroni. Al couldn't be more upset. Now, take a look at this. May storm dumps snow on Treasure Valley. No thanks. A late season snowstorm created slick conditions and knocked down branches and trees in some neighborhoods Monday. But more importantly, how rare is Boise May snow? Well, it's only happened a few times in more than 100 years. So we're seeing historic snow. Boise rec residents woke up to a winter wonderland on Monday with May snowstorm dropping heavy flakes across the Treasure Valley in what experts say was an extremely rare event. Oh, extremely rare. Do I dare? The National Weather Service Boise office reported almost a half an inch of snow at its office near Boise Airport by 9 a.m. But meteorologist Spencer Tangan said the National Weather Service had received reports of two or three inches near the foothills, and Bogus Basin had an additional foot of snow Monday morning. The second significant snowfall the ski area had since closing in early April. Holy schmaprol! That didn't even rhyme. Critical and extreme fire weather threat continues today. The major weather story today will be continued critical fire weather concerns, and it will last through tomorrow from drought conditions and high winds in the Four Corners region with extreme threats in New Mexico and Colorado. Also, rounds of strong to severe thunderstorms and locally heavy rain are possible across the upper Mississippi Valley and upper Midwest. Take a look at that. That magenta region, well, do not flick your cigarette butts out the window there. Mm. You could be costing people their lives. And it might prevent us from getting to the event in just a few days in southern New Mexico. Because we have to drive through right now three fires. We don't need any more. Al Gore's bore. Okay, let's take a look at the GFS model and the total snow forecast. Let's pause it. Boom! Just in the next 24 hours, heavy snow in northern California is going to continue to fall. Take a look at that. Up to 8, 10 inches in some regions. Maybe more. Who knew? And in Idaho, again, more snow, and the snow will continue through May 15th and the 16th. Look at that. The Northwest is going to be picking up snow for the rest of the week. And we won't even get to the future models because they can show snow continuing, but they're definitely off the charts. Seismic update, huge earthquake activity. Well, not really. Moderate uptick and moderately larger earthquakes worldwide. We haven't seen an uptick like this in quite a while. 6.3 in Papua New Guinea. Followed by multiple aftershocks. And we just had one kick off here in the Kermadec Islands at 5.2. Who knew? East Coast shocker, 3.3 in South Carolina. What a rarity. And more quakes in Europe. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what. The earth is changing. And things are getting stranging. And you're watching us report on it. Like we said six years ago, we would be doing when we started this channel. Worldwide Volcano News Update. 
Reventadors, Sun Gay, and others, but nothing significant except another little pulse of activity here on the tippy touch of the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland. And there is general overall high activity at this point, and the seismic swarm continues with another pulse in the last three hours. Hours of powers. Hey, you're all psychic in the last three hours as well. KP index back to zero. That means when you awaken tomorrow over most of the U.S., you'll be seeing quote-unquote chemtrails, which are just persistent contrails that tinfoil hat wearers like myself go nuts about, except we don't. Little C flare just kicking off as goes X-ray flare flux is low. Ho, ho. And take a look at this. Yeah. Take a look at this shutdown here. Plasma speed up at 550 and then just pew, complete shutdown in density, temperature. Density goes up while plasma speed goes to nowhere. And we have been all quiet on the Western front. And that gave us the KP0 psychic moment that we're all experiencing. Now, no, go for snake or rattlesnake. If you don't know much about snakes, I'll tell you what. If you see a yellow snake like this with big brown spots that has a triangular head and pretends to shake and rattle and roll and hiss, it's completely harmless. And it's a gopher snake. And you know how I know why? Because I encountered one of the largest gopher snakes in my entire experience today. So let's take a look at the differences uh, for the benefit of all humanity. Now, before we get there, real quick, I want to highlight this. The common misidentification is totally understandable between gopher snakes and rattlesnakes, as gopher snakes do their best to convince you that they're a dangerous rattler. A frightened gopher snake will usually hurl itself into a tightly coiled defensive pose, hissing loudly, which is why it is often called a blow snake or a bull snake. Furthering this ruse, the head is flattened to appear wider and triangular, resembling a venom gland-equipped viper. Additionally, the gopher snake's pattern of large brown blotches along the back are quite similar to rattlesnake's dorsal markings. As a final touch to the simulated authenticity, the pointy tail is nervously vibrated, and if that jittery tail end is pulsating against adjacent dead dry leaves, it can produce faint whirling noise, albeit a rather lackluster imitation of the rattlesnake's startlingly loud buzz. But we experienced all of this today in our encounter with the gopher snake. Take a look. Of epic proportion. I see one every spring crossing the road. Ding, ding. It's like an omen. That is a big boy. Now, we'll save you the full footage for tomorrow because we're going to put it up on uh, the channel. But thanks for watching. Have you seen a gopher snake? Well, I saw a pretty big one today. Now, Mercury's comet-like tail, April 29th, 2020. Planets aren't supposed to have tails, but Mercury does, as well as Venus, and sometimes Earth, and even Mars. And... Dr. Sebastian Voltmer just photographed it from La Palma in the Canary Islands, and it is spectacular. The Pleiades is to the north, and that is mm -hmm, the tail of Mercury. It certainly looks like a comet, doesn't it? So many of the tails in antiquity might just be the Mercurian cometary tail, being excited potentially by space weather. And if you join us at Squatterman 2022, You'll get up to speed on what's happening there. Now, groundbreaking results of the Milky Way black hole is coming soon. We reported on this last week. The announcement is coming any day now. In fact, May 12th, I think, but we'll get there. We will soon see the Milky Way supermassive black hole for the first time. No, they already claim they showed us that, and it's just simply a three pixels they claim is a donut. But astronomers are teasing at a big result this week. What lies at the center of our galaxy? Decades of calculations and data point to a supermassive black hole, about 4 million times more massive than our sun. But we've never seen it until someone claimed they pictured it, but then it's not really the picture. Details are scant about exactly what is going to be revealed. 
But in April 2019, the ETAHT collaboration unveiled the very first image of what wasn't really a black hole. And they're about to reveal more. Yes. And it's just coming in a few days. I don't have the date here, but it's, it's that groundbreaking and that important. You know, it is groundbreaking and important. Self-published papers like this by Enga Kalagena, friend of the channel, back in September of 2018. Plasma petroglyphs, plasma glyphs, petroglyphs, earthworks, and the megafauna extinction. Take a look. Free paper available for you on ResearchGate. And, well, that is very apropos because... I am now preparing like a madman for Squatterman 2022, which is just happening in a few days in Ruidoso, New Mexico. And that is a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in this dystopian world where we got 2,000 mules for free, and it's uploaded on our Rumble channel. Rumble. It's up on Rumble. Don't be a bumble. Support the work we do. We're gunning for you. We're giving you the facts. And we're sticking our foot up the <whistles> of the mainstream. Be safe. We love you. That's Bill. Mm -hmm.